Meanwhile at Boreham, former British, Irish and Dutch rally champion Mark Lovell have been invited by Ford Motorsport to try out the Group N car and to give them his opinion of the model that was confidently expected to dominate Group N rallying for the next few years. Mark's experience of four-wheel drive cars started with the RS200 in which he won the 1986 British Rally Championship. Having then won the Irish Tarmac Championship as well in a Sierra Cosworth, he was the ideal man to consult to try out the finished job for the first time. But first of all, of course, he had to do some posing for the cameras. Mark had been invited along by Bob Howe, the man who was responsible for much of the planning of the Escort Cosworth. And after he drove, Mark was able to give his first impressions. Well, it's very good. It's very nimble. It stops particularly well. Um, it turns in well and it handles very well. But it really, it's got a head start on any other new model because a lot of the stuff has come from the Sapphire Cosworth. And that's been proved and developed and now putting it into this chassis, it's just a sort of extending on the experience that we've already had and make it even better. And based on his four-wheel drive experience, what did he think were its chances of success as a rally car? Well, it, it should win. The Sapphire Cosworth's winning now in Group N, and this is going to be a better car. It's lighter, it's going to be easier to drive, it's a bit shorter to get through the narrow gateways when you're sideways. <laughs> but uh, it should be a winning car. Uh, it's got everything here. It's just going to be down to the nut behind the wheel now, as they say. The new car had obviously been built as an homologation special, but was meant as a road car as well. But did Mark expect a lot of people to be upgrading the new car for road use, or even for Group N competition? Well, I think to start off with, the standard road car is going to be fast enough for most people. Um, but if they do want to modify it, it's going to be quite, quite easy. I mean, most experienced mechanics should be able to do it. They've got to be enthusiasts anyway to do it properly. You wouldn't give it to a first-year trainee, but most performance workshops and Ford RS dealers should be able to cope with fitting the modifications that are required to make it up to the Group N standard that you've got here. It's not really a terribly complicated job, it just needs to be approached in the right frame of mind and with the right enthusiasm. Attention to detail is what's required to make it right. And for Ford, of course, the car itself would be quite important, even in its standard form. I think it's very important because um, at the end of the day, everybody looks at the top of the range. And if they see it on television rallying and winning, then they assume that a lot of that knowledge is going back down into their car unlike Formula One racing where sometimes people feel that it's so far advanced that it doesn't relate to the car that they've got. But if they see this car out there winning and doing well on World Championship on the home internationals, it's bound to make people feel that they've got the breeding from a rally winning car in their own ordinary road car. And um, especially in the early days, the new Escort did suffer a little bit with the, the right image. So. Hopefully we can put this right with this car. Mark was one of the lucky people who saw and drove the car before it launched it. So what now did he think would be the response of rally people when it first appeared on sale? It's bound to cause a sensation when it comes out. I mean, just look at the shape of it to start with. It's very eye-catching. It's got a lot of potential. A lot of the parts on it are already proven. The engine's good, we know that. The transmission, everything's all sorted it has to be a winning combination and it's bound to be a big worry to the other manufacturers because this little baby is going to be the leading car. Okay, so he liked it, but did he like everything about it? No, there's no radio in it, that's <laughs> <laughs> The ashtray's too small if you smoke more than you two a day. 
The future was certainly looking bright for the new Escort. 